Exodus benefited from a flood defense scheme put in in the 1970s. Since then, the scheme has been tested to the limit. In fact, on three separate occasions, it reached its capacity. So it's a great deal more at risk now than there was previously. Those things combined have led to the conclusion that the current risk to such a large conservation is unacceptable. We've actually inducted just over 1,200 people into the project um, and at its peak uh, we had nearly 150 people on site at any one time. We'll have worked um, an estimate around three quarters of a million man hours. For construction purposes the scheme has been split into six distinct zones. It extends over eight kilometres along the River X from zone one uh, which is at the northern end of the city and surrounding the network rail works through zones two, three and four which are focused on the city centre Zone 5 and 6 are then out towards the Bridge Road uh, and the Countess Weir um, areas of work. The actual defences themselves are fairly conventional for the most part. The difficulty was getting them through a really ancient city centre. For example, the floodgates, and we have 10 or 12 of those up and down the scheme. That means the gates are left out of the way um, during ordinary times, you know, the 99% of the time wherein it's not flooding. As we go further south, um, there are some demountable barriers which we're installing on the quayside. Posts are continuously in position, laid out along the quayside, and they're covered with uh, sort of black bollard covers. Uh, and when uh, a flood comes along, then uh, with the right amount of warning, teams will be deployed to remove those covers and then deploy metal panels between those posts uh, to keep the flood water back. When the Environment Agency builds a flood scheme, we have all sorts of obligations. One of them obviously is to reduce flood risk, but the other one is actually to integrate into the design of the scheme something that works well for people and wildlife. So at True Flood Relief Channel, we really wanted to um, increase the diversity, but also bring um, wildlife into the heart of the city, um, creating a meandering channel right the way down through the middle of that flood relief channel, planting in and bringing in wildflower seeds that actually allow the wildlife to thrive here. Further south, down at Countess Weir, we've got a very innovative control structure that opens and closes the flow into a historic leet uh, that runs through the old paper mills. However, it's necessary to protect those buildings and the residential properties around them. Uh, and so we've got a, a control device that closes automatically when water level gets high enough. And that means that the old village of Countess Weir will be protected. There's a, a little bit of wet woodland that supports a huge array of, of wildlife, including otters. And one of the opportunities down there was to extend the wet woodland. In effect, we've turned it from what was a grazed field into something that is now going to gradually grow up and become really humming with wildlife. Um, we've also created a, a linear orchard right the way through the scheme, which is there for people and wildlife, was um, planted with lots of volunteers and is help, help maintained by those volunteers and we hope in time as the trees mature you know they become places where you know people do go and picnic or go and story tell or just sit and watch the trees so we've generally made it wetter more diverse um, and hopefully as we go into the future it will become a really wild area that um, wildlife can thrive in. In excess of 3,200 properties benefit directly from these new works. So you also have key infrastructure of roads and the rail network, that's the main line coming down uh, into the West Country. And in the defended areas, you have four schools and seven health centres and, and a number of other critical items and critical properties for this community. The risk is dramatically reduced. In fact, it's reduced to a less than 1% chance of happening in any one year. Probably the greatest pride I have is taking over from where my father left off. My father worked for what was then the uh, National Rivers Authority and with his colleagues um, he developed the scheme as it is today and uh, it's my greatest pride is to take on where he left off and develop a, an even higher standard of protection for Exeter. It feels like we've brought the lung back into Exeter if you like. Um, it isn't a concrete lined lung anymore, it's very much living lively space for people and wildlife. <laughs>